Well, brothers, greetings in the Lord. Uh, my name is Stan Gale. I am a retired pastor at, living outside Philadelphia. If you look at your schedule, you'll see that the time, the, uh, the name of this session is a short address. Now, I'm a first time attendee, so I didn't really have a feel uh, for what a short address was. So I thought I, for guidance, I would turn to the word of God. And I found this, that after 13 chapters, the writer of Hebrews says, Brothers, I urge you to bear with my word of exhortation, for I have written you only a short letter. So that <laughs> gives me some parameters there. Now, I, I was not assigned a topic. And I said, whatever interests me. Well, I'm very interested in the French tennis open right now, but I thought that I would go for something more spiritual. Uh, the title of my little talk here is Practicing Practicing Union with Christ. John Murray, uh, the great Scottish theologian in his seminal book, um, Redemption Accomplished and Applied, describes a salvation that is exclusively and exhaustively bound up in Jesus Christ. And Murray makes the point that Jesus, in his redemption, did not accomplish the possibility of redemption. He actually accomplished the redemption of those he came to save. In part two of his book, he goes on to lay out, lay out the ordo salutis, the logical progression for the application of Christ's redemption by the Holy Spirit in the experience of God's elect. He begins with effectual calling, regeneration, faith and repentance, justification, adoption, sanctification. He culminates in glorification. But Murray says that overarching, encompassing all of redemption from its appointment by the Father to its accomplishment by the Son to its application by the Holy Spirit, overarching and undergirding everything is the core doctrine of union with Christ. Our Lord Jesus emphasizes this centrality in his metaphor of the vine and the branches. In John 15, when he says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, you abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Abide in me and I in you. And that's expressive of union with Christ. Union with Christ um, is, presents both an indicative and an imperative. Indicative in the sense that we do not have life unless we are united to Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. We do not grow in life. We do not mature. We do not have vitality. We do not have health without abiding in Jesus Christ. So there's an indicative, a positional, and an imperative where we exercise our union with Christ for every aspect of Christian life and mission. All right, so John speaks of abiding in Christ, but there are other ways in Scripture this is presented. John, in his epistle, and in his book, in the book of Revelation, he describes, he speaks of, over, of abiding as overcoming. And overcoming is abiding with a sense of resistance, of effort and perseverance. We overcome in Christ, not in our own strength. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And so for John, overcoming is abiding with that resistance, reminding us that we persevere to uh, in what we already have won for us by the blood of Christ. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, he's big on union with Christ. He represents it as in Christ, in Christ. And in Christ dominates the first chapter and continues through. And then when he arrives at the end of Ephesians, he talks about spiritual warfare. And there he speaks of standing, standing firm. And that's just another way of speaking of abiding in Christ. In the scriptures, we have an intelligence report on our enemy. We see his character. We see his goals. We see his 
tactics as he tries to lure us and blind us and entrap us and seduce us and ruin us. So how do we stand firm? How do we abide in Christ for spiritual warfare? Let me just give you three examples. You know, Satan is described in a variety of ways in Scripture. Uh, one of the ways he's described is as the accuser of the brethren. How do we stand firm? Well, against the devil's accusations, we stand firm in the gospel. Cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, clothed in his righteousness. And so that when that what, what that says is that when we sin and we do sin and Satan points out our sin and he accuses us and the guilt of that sin weighs upon us, what do we do? We look to Jesus Christ. He says, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. And so we answer the enemy's accusations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Another title of Satan is the father of lies. When he lies, he speaks his native language. Well, against the devil's deceptions, we stand firm in the revealed truth of God by bringing the word of Christ to dwell in us richly. So we discern between truth and error against the devil's deceptions and seductions who would lure us to go this way or that way. And then the third example that I'll give is he is called the tempter. The tempter. How do we stand firm in Christ there? Well, against the devil's temptations, we stand firm in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that is at work within all of us who believe. So we stand knowing that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So every tactic the enemy gives, we look to Christ to do battle. Let me close with this. If it is the case that the practice of union with Christ through abiding in him is necessary for life and godliness, and John 15 tells us that it is, then it is incumbent upon us as ministers of the gospel to instruct those in our charge in how to abide in Christ and what it means to equip them in all God's means to be rooted and built up in Christ. Let me pray. Father, we thank you that we can be here. We thank you for the fellowship of the brethren. We thank you, Lord, for how you are equipping us here through the books and the talks and the admonition and the counsel of one another to do battle. And above all, Lord Jesus, to know you and your amazing grace better. Bless our time remaining. In your name we pray. Amen.